What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing another vlog style video and I know what you're going to say but you've already done that and the answer is yes but every day is different so why not do another day? This is day one of six night shifts and uh, yeah let's see what we see. Let's go. Alright guys, so the very first thing I do when I get here is log into the system, and then next, I go get the pager. Got it. Even though I hate this thing, you have to hold it for the next 12 hours. Uh, I also got sign out from the Interventional Radiology Fellow, who goes home at 8pm and turns everything over to me. So I transfer the IR pager over to the Radiology pager, so I cover Radiology and Interventional Radiology overnight. If someone needs us that. Uh, or emergent interventional radiology consult, they call me and I call the fellow in. That's how that works. It's not a bad gig for fellows. All right, so the next thing I do is wipe down my station. It's cold and flu season right now. I have a cold right now, and I don't want the flu like I had last year, so we're gonna wipe it down. Wipe that dictaphone down. And I use these anti-cancer, anti-TB wipes or whatever. That's why I wear gloves, because apparently they cause cancer or something like that. Either way, I don't want it on my skin. All right, so let's turn down the lights and start reading some studies. All right, so it's now like 8.40, and I've been here 40 minutes, and I just got paged by the nuclear medicine tech that there is a HIDA scan that he needs me to look at to make sure the patient doesn't have acute cholecystitis. So that's what we're going to do now. Be right back. All right, so that was just a false alarm. The tech just had some trouble with positioning the patient to get the right image. However, I will still teach you how to read a HIDA scan. Let's go. Today we're going to be discussing a HIDA scan. HIDA. That stands for Hepatobiliary Aminodiacetic Acid Scan. So what we do with this scan is we inject a radio-labeled substance, technesium mebrofenin, and it goes in through the bloodstream, into the liver, and excreted via the biliary system. So as you can see, gets taken up by the liver, liver, and then as you see, the gallbladder will eventually start showing up. It's better down here. More delayed phases at the bottom. So once the gallbladder shows up, we know that this is a normal study. As you can see, this is a normal study as well. You see the vague outline of the liver, and as the radio tracer in the liver decreases, goes into the biliary system and then refluxes back up into the gallbladder where it is stored. You have a nice opaque gallbladder which means contrast is making it through the hepatic duct and common bile duct as well as the cystic duct and into the gallbladder which means there is no obstruction and no cholecystitis. This is a normal study. Alright, so you still don't know what the heck I'm talking about. So let's go into it. So here we have the liver and the biliary system. Normally the radio tracer will be taken up into the liver. It'll go down the bile ducts into the common bile duct. And some of it will reflux into the gallbladder, which makes the gallbladder black on imaging because it is full of radio tracer. Now, say you had a whole bunch of gallstones in your gallbladder, and one of them decided to come up and sit right into the cystic duct and give you a whole bunch of pain and the doctors would be worried about acute cholecystitis. What we would see on our HIDA scan is that the radio tracer would be taken up into the liver, it would go down the bile ducts as it should, and into the duodenum. However, when the radio tracer would go down the biliary ducts, it would not reflux into the 
cystic duct and into the gold bladder because it is being blocked by this stone right here. So we would not see the gold bladder light up on a positive scan. Hopefully that made sense. So when there's a stone blocking the duct, the cystic duct, contrast or radio tracer cannot go into the gold bladder and therefore we will not see the gold bladder on our scan. So just to reiterate, this is a positive study for acute cholecystitis. This is just going to play on a loop here, but you'll see the liver fill up first, and then you'll see bowel activity, but you don't see a gallbladder. So liver goes straight to the biliary ducts and down into the bowel, and nothing refluxes into the gallbladder, which means it is blocked off, most likely by a stone, and therefore it is acute cholecystitis. So if you don't see the gallbladder, positive study for acute cholecystitis. Hopefully that makes sense now. Now let's get back to the video. Oh my gosh, guys. It is literally 1240 in the morning. That's four hours since I last recorded that last uh, video. And I have been literally nonstop since. Anything from just crazy MRs to contrast extravasations at the MRI scanner, nuclear medicine techs needing me for the Hiatus scans, I mean, nonstop. I tried to help my lower level out with some traumas, but she was getting destroyed by all the traumas that came in. And I didn't even have time to help her, which I always feel bad about, because I like to make sure their list is nice and tidy as well. So now I'm going to finally get up. Since I've been sitting here reading studies the last four hours, I'll go take a little walk and get some water and come back in and wait for some studies to come in. And since I'm going to the lounge, I might as well bring you with me. Alright, so here we go. We have our water cooler. This is a new addition just in. Our books all around. Mail, microwave, coffee machine, which I use all the time. The drawer, which is usually full, which now is just disgusting. Usually there's some coffee in there. Fridge, chairs, couch that converts to a bed, which I may or may not be on later. Our pack station, which is located conveniently directly across from the bed. And we have a little TV in here. Actually, it's pretty big. It's like 27 inch or plus, maybe 40 inch. I don't even know. And some computers, printer, phone, the good stuff. So, hope you enjoy your stay in our lounge. That is all we have here. All right, guys, so it is 3 a.m. And if you watch my other videos, you know what that is time for. It's time for Starbucks. guys so it's about 3 30 ish now got my coffee I've been a little busy so some of the studies I've read tonight uh, I've read a whole bunch of brain MRIs uh, to rule out strokes which is usually the most common thing we brain MRIs we read uh, I haven't read any total spine MRIs yet which is weird because the ER loves to order those and if you've seen my Instagram, you know that I hate reading those because, for one, they're usually ordered incorrectly. B, they're really expensive. And C, they take a lot of my time to read. And my list starts piling up the more time I spend on those total spines. Um, what else? I've read... I've had to deal with the Haida patient today. Uh, the tech needed me a few times. And we've gone over that. So now you know all about Haida scans. I've had to go to one of the scanners for a contrast extravasation, which is also the bane of my existence because when I'm really busy and they call me for that stuff, I have to leave and go do that. I read a CT angiogram. I've had to deal with a patient who is bleeding on the floor and they've, I've almost had to call in the IR fellow, but not yet because the patient is stable. And if they do become unstable, 
within the next few hours, I will call the fellow in to come try to embolize them. Um, and that's it. So for the next few hours or so, I'll sit here. I have a couple more stat studies that are coming down the pipe. I'll hit those, and then I'll probably just work on some YouTube videos as the studies roll in for the next wee hours. When it gets this late, I get really tired, and I really can't do much. So the studies start slowing down, and I'll usually start working on my YouTube videos or whatever I have. I usually just watch YouTube, not too much work, but it is what it is. And since there's only so much I can take of wearing contacts at 4.15 in the morning, it's time to take them out and switch over to glasses. All right, so it's now 7 a.m. and I will go sign out to interventional radiology to let them know about the bleeding patient overnight. Somehow they didn't decide to bleed again, so we didn't have to intervene but they will this morning. So I have to go tell them about it. And then, lucky me, we have a 7 a.m. physics lecture today. So that's pretty cool. Nothing like working 11 hours than sitting through a one hour physics session. I'm sure I won't fall asleep, but we'll see how it goes. Somehow we made it through another night and I need to get some sleep. All right, guys, so it's officially 8.15 in the morning now. I am completely dead. Actually, I'm not that tired. The first night is always the best because you're just not tired yet. I'll probably get like two hours of sleep tonight and then wake up exhausted, so that's cool. Anyways, do me a favor and gently tap on that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment below if I like it. I'll respond to it. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video.